Hello, I'm Klaus in Singapore and I'm producing this video for my blog Business Performance Management bpmsg.com In my last video presentation I introduced the concept of diversity as a business KPI. If you haven't seen it yet, please watch it first. Today I will introduce the partitioning of diversity in alpha and beta diversity and give you a few practical business applications. On my website you can find a free Excel template for non-commercial use and experiment with other data and applications. We will use the Shannon Entropy, also named Shannon Diversity Index, to describe diversity. Taking the natural logarithm, we can convert to true diversity numbers using the exponential function. For an equal distribution, the maximum of the Shannon entropy equals the natural logarithm of Richards R or number of classes in the distribution. The minimum is zero when our proportional variable is concentrated in one category only. The more unequal the proportional abundances, the smaller the Shannon entropy. Therefore, high Shannon entropy stands for high, low Shannon entropy for low diversity. Let us go back to our example of selling different drinks in a restaurant. With seven types of drinks equally selling, the Shannon entropy is logarithm of 7 or 1.95. Now let us assume we manage restaurants at seven different locations and we get a monthly summary report of total sales of the different type of drinks. Does it mean we are selling all drinks evenly at all locations? There are two extreme possibilities. The first one, yes. At each location we sell evenly all types of drinks. High diversity or Shannon entropy of 1.95 in Boston, New York, Denver, etc. Resulting in a high diversity of sales for the total sales area. What is the second possibility? In Boston we are selling coffee only, low diversity with Shannon entropy of zero. Similar in New York, here we are selling tea only, low diversity with Shannon entropy of zero, but selling a different type of drink, tea instead of coffee. Similar in Denver with Coke and so on. Now looking at our total sales, it looks the same as in the first case. The total diversity is high as overall we are selling all drinks equally. What we actually see here is a partitioning of diversity into two independent components. Diversity at the individual location is called alpha diversity. Our total sales report, the consolidation of all sales locations, gives us the gamma diversity and the difference gamma minus alpha diversity reflects the beta diversity. Now I can also explain the reason why we selected the Shannon entropy instead of the Simpson index. Only for the Shannon entropy at the measure of diversity the partitioning of or the overall diversity into two independent alpha and beta components follows a simple additive relation. What stands beta diversity for and how can we interpret it? Beta diversity is a measure for the similarity and overlap between samples of distributions, in our case locations. Partitioning diversity in alpha and beta diversity allows us to gain insight in the variation across samples. The concept of alpha and beta diversity can be very useful in many applications. 
for example, comparing and analyzing sales distributions in different sales areas, cluster marketing, investment diversification over time periods, or measuring consensus in group decision making. How can it be done? Let us take the example of comparing the proportional sales at different sales locations. We arrange the locations as rows and columns to form a matrix and then make a pairwise comparison of sales at each location with all other locations, calculating beta entropy for each cell in the matrix. In our example, sales distribution in Boston is different from New York, high beta entropy. Sales distribution in New York is similar to Denver, low beta diversity. If we mark high and low entropy in different colors, we recognize clusters of high similarity between locations. Let us have a look at some actual figures coming from a real company. I compared the sales distribution of different product segments at 20 sales locations and you can easily identify four clusters with low beta diversity and therefore high similarity of the markets. Changing to alpha diversity, we see that the first one of the clusters represents a low diversified market, the second and fourth a medium diversified market and the third a well diversified market. Based on this analysis we could use the clustering of sales locations to develop common marketing measures for each cluster of similar markets. As another example, let us investigate the diversification of a finance portfolio over time. Our strategy was to diversify the investment by spreading our investment into different classes of financial instruments like equity, money market, bonds and fixed income. From year 2004 to 2013, Alpha diversity changed from 3.7 to 7. Beta diversity shows that the diversification was achieved in steps of 2 and 3 year changes. Let me summarize. We used the Shannon Diversity Index, the Shannon Entropy, as a measure to describe diversity. Equal distributions result in high Shannon entropy. The more unequal the distribution, the smaller the Shannon entropy. Diversity for a set of data samples can be partitioned into two independent components, alpha and beta diversity. Beta diversity is a measure for similarity and overlap between samples of distributions. Partitioning diversity in alpha and beta diversity allows us to gain insight in the variation of distributions across samples. Examples of applications in the field of business analysis are comparison of sales distributions, cluster marketing, or the analysis of investment and diversifications of financial assets over time periods. I use the concept of partitioning diversity to develop a consensus indicator for group decision making using multi-criteria decision making methods as for example the analytic hierarchy process. For now Thank you for your interest and watching and see you in my next video.